Hi, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central. Today, we will cover the process of creating a quilt. Beginning with computer-aided graphics, the design and tool choices for machine quilting, as well as batting and hoop selection for hand quilting. Inspiration comes from many sources. I'm sure today's show will be one of them, so sit back and enjoy. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company, Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central. Celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. If you've always wanted to learn how to hand quilt, my guest today is an expert at hand quilting. Joining me is Cindy Walter. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you. Hi, Donna. I'm glad you're here, and I, I have seen your quilts many places at quilt shows, and I've seen what you've brought to share today, and your quilting is absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you. I love hand quilting. I've taught hand quilting more than any other technique, and I'm glad I can share it with you today. Good. How do you get started? How do you decide what to do? Well, the first thing is you have to prepare your top. So once your top is done, we have to mark it and decide on our quilting lines. The quilting lines don't have to be confusing, or um, uh -huh. you don't have to have anything special. Uh, I love to have a grid like this is just a grid on an antique uh, applique pattern mm -hmm. simply just gridded and it's so beautiful or you can buy stencils or different patterns like these feathers but one of the most traditional things is for a sampler type of quilt is to just simply echo mm -hmm. the different patchwork pieces. Like you've done here, which yeah, is Yeah, it isn't that beautiful? Yes. And you can eyeball that or draw the lines on. But regardless, uh, decide on your quilting lines first uh -huh. and mark the top if it needs to be marked before you sandwich. Good idea, because yes. then you don't get any shuffling with that's, the batting and all of that's that. That's right. And now we're ready to talk about sandwiching okay. it but we have to decide on our batting. Mm -hmm. For hand quilting, I love a lightweight polyester. I mean, that's always been one of our preferred battings. Uh, cotton batting I like too, but I save that for machine quilting because it's a little hard to hand needle. Uh, and there's a new middle of the road batting, uh, wool. Have oh. you ever used wool? I've used it, but it always seems to be so thick. Yes, well, there's absolutely a new wool that we brought in from uh, Australia that's needle punch so that it doesn't beard or uh -huh. ball up with a little bit of a... a it's so thin. It's so lightweight, and I just used it machine quilting mm -hmm. because I have a new grandbaby <gasps> daughter, Amanda. How nice, how yes. nice. And wool is warm, and it's lightweight. So this is so yes. lightweight and warm, uh, and just perfect for hand or machine quilting. Absolutely one of my favorite battings now completely. That's great. And wool comes also in dark colors. So here, since I'm working with a dark mm -hmm. fabric, mm -hmm. I could have a dark wool. So to sandwich our quilt, well, another easy great tip is using the new spray base on the mm -hmm. market. And simply put the batting down on the surface first and then line up the top or the backing. Get it all nice and lined up. Mm -hmm. And then peel back just half of it. And you can help me on that side there okay. if you want. And you're just going to spray base just about this much. And that just is like a tacking it together is. on and them. just You can spray a little bit more than that, but don't overspray. Uh -huh. Start in the center and just smooth this down. Then spin the quilt around and do on the other side too. And I'll show you, I've already sprayed, sprayed the top. Oh, look at that. And so this quilt basically is ready to go in my hoop um, and it's completely basted. And the nice thing is you don't have all those pins to contend with, oh, which can be difficult to work around. I'm going to put it in a hoop, which yep. I'm going to show you how to use right now too. Uh, this is a traditional made in America hardwood hoop, wonderful. And the small part, or the yeah, the smaller part is going to go underneath. Mm -hmm. And here I've set the quilt on top. 
and put the larger part on, on over it and just push it down on there, flip it on over and check the back and if the back is not perfect, slightly pull it so that it's okay. taut like a well-made sheet. But be careful to not pull it too much and try to not pull on the bias of the fabric. Pull right. on the grain so that you don't stretch it out of shape. Check the top again and we're in there nice and tautly and then go ahead and tighten this up and I would be ready to quilt on this on this hoop and on now, this project. Do you always start in the center? Always start in the center and then rotate around and hoop the next piece overlapping some of the first oh, pieces. Okay. So, so that you're never completely yes. starting with a new area. Right, because you'll get little puckers and you don't want to stretch the project out of shape. And there's another uh, square hoop available that I absolutely adore and I use it constantly. That is because how do you use the round hoop on the edges? Right. You really can't. So now there's a square hoop and I pin up my edges. I've got these pinned up, but I pin up my edges to protect the batting and such. So my backing and, and batting is a little bit bigger than my top, so I can actually put the hoop right into that area uh -huh. and still get the top. But you would then use your traditional binding on it at the end. Definitely. This I would just, just trim this off. To protect the batting, because I've seen sometimes where the batting gets very ragged around right. the edges. Especially if it's taking you a month or two in your... Oh, and to doesn't it take you that right. long? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's great. Now, um, do you use marking pencils to, to mark the tops and that? Well, you can. Uh, there's a whole variety of regular old lead pencils, what my grandmother used, and mm -hmm. it washes out as long as you use a light hand. There's silver pencils right. that wash all out sorts white. Of different things. Any of them you want, but always use a light hand and test it if you have a problem. Great. Well, thank you for sharing your quilting That's tips good. With and us. on the next show, I'm going to teach you how to hand quilt. Good. Thank you. Okay. Everything I do mostly is making of art and so it's not I don't think of it as a commercial thing I sell my work I show in shows but I just make art and I do it in response to an idea and uh, an image I have inside that I need to get out uh, and then my work sells uh, sometimes it doesn't sell until years later but I'm represented in galleries um, in California and Japan an artist can really live anywhere it is the work that may need to travel. Frida Fairchild Studio is located in her beautiful Victorian home in Paducah, Kentucky. She has spent many hours working on her home and is just one of several artists taking part in the artist relocation program. Well, I always had a fantasy about uh, living in a, an old house with all the details. And so for the last few years, I was seriously considering looking for a spot where I could move and live more economically. Uh, Southern California is a very expensive place to live. For example, um, my mortgage payment here is less than my electric bill was last year in California. So I get a lot more, you know. So I one day was reading in an art magazine and I saw this advertisement about Paducah and I was not familiar with Paducah and so I called up Mark Baroni and talked to him about it. Frida has worked in art related areas all of her life so the idea of living in a community of creative people appealed to her. And about 15 years ago I decided that I needed to devote all of my time to art and I took a sort of a risk and I stopped working and just spent all my time doing art. Now I've always been a fiber artist which means you know I worked with with fabric in various ways but I was increasingly drawn to printmaking. It is so exciting there are just so many possibilities so basically that's what I am a printmaker although the fiber is still a real part of my work and I use it a lot in conjunction with the printmaking. It's, it's an etching process. It was developed back in the Renaissance and it was used for the first books. Grimbrandt did a lot of etchings. And they used to be mostly black and white. And I found this a little limiting. I love color. So I use a lot of color. So there's all different venues for me to put the finished work. Uh, and sometimes I'm working on fiber, sometimes I'm working on printmaking, sometimes I'm working on metal. There are some metal sculptures in the front room that I actually did weaving of, so I took bits of weaving, and some of them actually have fiber embedded within them. So 
I'm not really in any one category where you say this is what she does. I do a lot of things and sometimes they meld into each other. If you're a quilter that's also adept at using the computer, I know you're going to enjoy my guest. Joining me is Penny McMorris. Welcome, Penny. Hi, Donna. I'm really glad to be here. In fact, everyone in our office was excited about the projects that we're making to show you. They all worked on it together. Oh, so, good. Yeah, they'll be watching. Now, how long have you been using the computer as an aid for design and whatever you do on it? We've been at it now for 10 years. This is our 10th anniversary. Wow. So it's time has flown and it's interesting to see how it's changed because in the beginning most quilters didn't have access to scanners, digital cameras, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we've noticed is that quilts have gotten more and more personal because people are having access to scanners. They're scanning in their own fabrics, they are using digital cameras, mm -hmm. sending pictures of yes. grandkids all yeah. around the country. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to show how you can put those pictures into a quilt. Yes, and we started with, um, we asked everybody at the office to kind of brainstorm, and we actually started with these two things as an impetus for uh -huh. a memory quilt. This is actually a dish towel that was Margaret's, and we, we used this. Yeah, that's what she thought and she kind of designed the colors in it. Uh -huh. And then this is my great grandfather in the Union um, Army during the Civil War. And you can see him down here. And so what That's I'm going great. to show you is how you can actually take all of these things, the colors, the photographs, and put them together in the quilt. Good. Well, let's get started. Okay. Well, we've learned a lot about what people want to do because there are websites that have lessons about importing fabrics from uh -huh. the web. There are people that are having challenges. We pay a great yeah. deal of attention trying to see what people are actually mm -hmm. doing. And I think especially now, people want to do a lot more with fabric, making it very, very personal. Mm -hmm. Judy Fletcher, for example, takes the electric quilt and actually prints out fabric, and she makes a quilt by oh. cutting out the fabric. So that's one very arty way to do it. And anyone can really start very easily with a program that lets you do layouts. Okay. In this program, I can have access to over 400 layouts. These are all set up for you so that you know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You want to make a California king or okay. a wall quilt. And this one that we made for the show is a wall quilt. So all we did was choose the very simplest one. Here it is, and we decided we didn't want to do these many blocks. This is actually a 50 by 50 wall quilt. So what we did, everything is always adaptable in mm -hmm. the computer. All we needed to do was to change the size of this. And okay. to do this, let me go over here and drag the layout screen. There it is. Okay. And we just took out a couple blocks ah, on top perfect. and one at the bottom, and now it's 30 by 40. Isn't that amazing? That's the neat thing about computers is that you can always make changes and make it really your own. Then we picked a log cabin block. We put it in here, and let me show you where the block came from, because up here we've got a block library, too. There are oh. over 3,000 blocks. You can just search. We typed in log cabin, clicked search. It's going to find <gasps> blocks. Look at that. So you could change Variations. it to any of these. Mm -hmm. And some of these you can actually just, this one, for example, would be perfect for this because it's got a space. Imagine yes. grandkids' Absolutely. faces or your cats or uh -huh. whatever you want. You could vary the different blocks, too, if you had elongated photos you or sure horizontal could. or vertical. You sure could. And if you want to do something like stars, this gives you access to lots of basic blocks. Uh -huh. And these are really fun to try. So let's get started with this one. Mm -hmm. We've sat in the block. Here's a tool that is the symmetry tool. If I try this one, it's going to flip the blocks <gasps> and allow oh. me to get some of them. I know my photographs happen to be, some of them were horizontal, mm -hmm. some of them were mm -hmm. vertical. So that's a good way of doing that. It also lets you, if you wanted to make a regular log cabin quilt, get some of the great effects like in this sunshine and mm -hmm. shadow kind mm -hmm. of effect here. Now for the photograph, 
I click here. Here's the photograph that we've scanned in. Yes. This might be your grandchildren or uh -huh. it could be anything. So we'll click on layer two and here, if I drag it, especially if I get the right key. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Oh, okay. It's a little big here, so I can click here and I'll zoom in. There he is. And, and to really fine tune it, all I need to do, I want it to be four by six. Uh -huh. And I'll shift him over <gasps> here and I'll show you how we print this. So you can not only design, but you can actually just print the quilt picture right on here. So it could be any picture that you'd have. I choose picture, size from quilt, preview, and there it is. Isn't that amazing? Now, do you have a piece that you printed of that? Yep, I sure do. I've got all, all the makings oh, for the quilt that. right here. Now, what we did was we used some, there are many different kinds of fabrics on paper, or you can just simply take fabric, cotton, and pre-treat it with like bubble jet set, right. and use Avery labels or template material or freezer paper just to stiffen it. Yes, and so that it goes through the copy machine. Yeah. I mean, through the printer, actually. Mm -hmm. Here's the actual fabric okay. right here. And it's still soft now. I mean, it has a little bit of uh, stiffness to it, but it's that just, softens up as you Yeah, it does, it. and it's all color fast and washable. We had some fun. I even had letters from oh. him. So we actually printed some letters uh -huh. that he'd actually written. And on the quilt, they're right down here. So we're actually using oh, this as a fabric. fabric. Mm -hmm. Great. And you could use this as the label in the back and then sign your name and yeah. to whom it's from. You can do all kinds of things. I just like the calligraphy look. Yes. Then we're actually going to make this quilt. So okay. we printed out the rotary cutting instructions. Mm -hmm. We printed out a yardage chart, mm -hmm. and then we actually printed out the whole thing for the label. And if you how did you get the fabrics? I mean, how did you select which fabrics? Did you good point? Here, let me unzoom. We have fabrics right in the program. Now you can <gasps> scan your own in, or just choose a fabric and click here especially if you're on the right layer. Uh-huh. Oh, so you can preview whatever you want. It's a great way to try things out. Here's the one that I think we actually ended up with over here. Uh-huh. Oh, there are yes. over 3,000 fabrics already in here, so it comes packed with fabrics, but lots of people like to scan their own things in. Mm -hmm. But this is nice, even if you're not going to use that specific fabric and you're going to go shopping for new fabrics, mm -hmm. it tells you what colors you might like to look for. So it's a wonderful aid to have all those fabrics. Yeah, there. you never know until you really get, it makes such a difference, what uh -huh. fabric you have in what part of the quilt. And if you flip over that corner, you can okay. see the label that we did. Oh, yes. Same way, we just mm -hmm. printed a block and then Margaret, who made this quilt in the office, just put her own name and titled it. Now that little piece shows uh, a whole print of the quilt. Is that this what is did? actually all printed? And we had a have a large format printer, uh -huh. and which is now a lot of people have access to because they're not that expensive mm -hmm. anymore. So we actually just printed it. So this is a picture of the quilt just printed. Would make a great little doll quilt. It's wonderful. And would only take probably half an hour to do the whole project. Well, Penny, it is so exciting, and I can see that you could spend hours working here and designing and creating and coming up with wonderful quilts from using your computer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that you can do. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Today we have with us Danita Reeb. She's one of my best friends, and she's a celebrity long-arm quilting teacher. Hi, Danita. Hi, Janie. Thanks for having me here today. I brought along a couple of quilts to share with you today, and this one in particular I brought because it's totally free motion done from the front side of the machine, and you always Thank have you teased too. me about being <laughs> such a structured quilter ever since we've known each other. And so I brought you one thing to prove that I don't do everything so with a ruler. Colored outside the lines right. now. 
Okay. This is done. This is kind of fun because it's done with a variegated thread that seems to just blend in with you know all those colors. But it's true that most of my quilting is all is mostly custom. I'd probably do most of my work from the front side of the machine. And a lot of people start off doing pantographs when they get their long arm machines. And I've just always wanted to work from the front side of the machine since it was brand new. Uh huh. This is a piece that I brought just to show you. This is a little pre-printed panel. And when I first got my machine, it's one of the very first things I quilted. And I just didn't know any better. So I just started out quilting and following all the different outlines that were already printed on the fabric. And the one interesting thing about this piece, I think, is that it tells the story on the back of the quilt. And that's something that I always try and keep in mind when I'm quilting, is what does the quilt look like on the back? Yeah, it's a good way to see if you missed anything. I always check my bags, too. That's a good idea, too, to see if you missed anything before you give it to the customer and have to pin it back on. You can tell if you're in balance that way. This now, is beautiful, Isn't Nita. it? This belongs to one of my customers, and this is one that I would just love to have. It's Myrna Tarnaski's quilt, and she does such a beautiful job piecing. It's always fun to do the finished quilting on her projects. And this one, I think, is a pretty good overview of a kind of the style of quilting that I really like to do, which is a combination of some straight line quilting, uh, some free motion work. I've done some outlining, and the border was done with a stencil. And this particular quilt is kind of fun because this area right in here uh, is done with a color crayon. Just a regular crayon and she just darkened that area. It was part of the pattern design and you mark that d these leaf designs on your fabric, color it with the crayon and then heat set it. Oh. And I think it just makes a really beautiful application. She does beautiful shading. See, I knew you'd bring the <laughs> rulers. You're right, I can't go anywhere without my rulers. And this is just, um, it's kind of like my kitchen. I like to cook as much as I like to quilt, and this is how my kitchen looks also. It is full of gadgets. I have <laughs> to have the right tool for everything. And so a lot of my quilting is not the very fastest type of quilting, but I really like to use all these different accessories, to use the, the gadgets and tools and rulers and widgets and doodads. So for instance, I thought I would just show you briefly well, some of the different... we kind of know what we do with a straight one. Right, well, that's, some of the that's a ones. great tool for um, your cross hatching because yes. it's long enough to cover your entire stitching path. This one is one of my very favorites, and this is called a four-in-one tool. And you know, a lot of times you've got a, um, ha a row of half-square triangles, and you want them to look very symmetrical, really yes. similar to each other. Um, and so this tool works really great. You just line this up so that you're a quarter of an inch away from Inside. where you want to stitch, because that's where your hopping foot takes you. So for instance, I would go across, up, down, across, up, down, across, up, down, and then you just come back in a row across the top. And then it all looks like little orange peel or apple slice shaped pieces. Mm -hmm. all and they're all real uniform. Yes. And you know, that's what I really like. Um, and even when I do feathers, sometimes I will use a, a tool such as this acrylic tool with just um, several of them have, you know, a little bit more curve or less curve. And I'll stitch in the spine of my feather, pull it away, stitch the feathers, and then you can set that back in place. And then your spine is just exactly yeah. one on top of the other. You always need to get the spine in first and you can kind of create from there. So and sometimes I'll scatter those around randomly and fill that in. And I used a star template over here on the side. And these are kind of fun to use because you can start your machine at a little bit higher speed and stitch in some loops that are different sizes and a little bit different shapes. Stop the machine, feed this on around your needle bar. And this is really an easy tool to use because with these little indentations, you can really grip it really easily, stitch around the star, remove it, and do some more loops and go to your next area. This section of the quilt, I showed a couple, a couple of different techniques. For instance, if you have a, a, a stencil, this is a great, uh, a great stencil to use to find the center of your block. And just dust it with a little bit of chalk with a paintbrush. Well, you're just a starting. Find your center point. point with that. 
And when I have people come for a workshop, I usually have them work on a piece of muslin that we draw in some of the, um, the squares and the sashing. It's a nice, easy thing for them to practice on, and it gives you a lot of variety. I think this is a really good sampler for the students to make up yes. and take to a quilt shop that, because it shows such a variety of techniques. Well, you have shown us some wonderful, wonderful things to need in the combination of straight lines and a little bit of freehand, but still some guidance with some of the gadgets is just wonderful. I think it makes a nice balance. It sure does. And thank you so much for showing us your techniques. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company, Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free at 1-866-PADUCA.